Colossians 1.5 is a somewhat challenging verse. I have ekata there at the beginning because the dia ties into that. So the previous idea is that the Colossians have faith and love. And now Paul is going to explain something about that. Dia tain elpida tain apokemenen humin entois uranois ein praecusata in to lago tes aletheas to yongaliu. So you, the Colossians, have faith and love, and that comes to you through the hope. And this is just the second attributed position, isn't it? Article, noun, article, modifier, happens to be a participle. Through the hope, which is reserved, laid up, kept for you all in the heavens. And whether uranois is singular or plural, we think of heaven as a singular entity And so it's always going to be translated in the heaven, unless the writer is making a point about multiple heavens. But generally, it's going to be translated in the singular. Then you have your relative clause, feminine singular. So it's going back up to the hope, which then goes back up to faith and love. And this is a simple compound form, right? Pra and akuo, and it keeps its etymological meaning, which you heard beforehand, and where? In the word, what word? The word of truth, and then of the gospel. Okay, let's come back and look at some of these things. Aletheus. So, in the word of truth. Now, it's possible that this is what's called an Hebraic genitive. It's a construction in Hebrew that made its way into Biblical Greek. And what it is, it's a way to take a noun and turn it into an adjective. So you could translate this, in the word of truth, or in the truthful word. If you look at the translations, you can see how they handle it. The word of truth, N-E-S-B, the word of truth, E-S-V, the word of the truth, N-R-S-V, the word of truth, But over in the NIV, it's you heard of in the true message. See, they're viewing it as an Hebraic genitive. And in the Net Bible, it's the message of truth. So really only the NIV is the one saying that it's a Hebraic genitive. And the others are just going more word for word. You can decide what you think it is and is it significant. But this last phrase is interesting. I just translated it in the word of the truth of the gospel, which is doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. So what is this? Why is this in the genitive singular? It's because it's in apposition to the truth, right? So the word of truth is the gospel. And again, if you look at the translations, you can see how most of them have commas. N-A-S-B, E-S-V, NRSV, CSB, Net Bible, and just because the way the NIV did it, it makes it clear that the gospel is the message of truth. So it's a really good example of an appositional construction. So to do the phrasing, it's through the hope. And I'm going to go ahead and start a new line there because it's a modifier, which is laid up for you. And you could put in the heavens under there if you wanted to. But you've got then a relative clause. And you have your appositional construction. Okay, so here's what I would do with this. First of all, you got to indent it, you, that you have this faith and love and account of the hope. What's that hope? And you can see it's, it's going to wrap on the screen So I'm going to go ahead and start a new line there just to save it. That's where it's laid up for you in heaven. Then you have this second modifier. So not only is the hope of what is laid up for us in heaven, but it's the hope, faith and love, which you heard beforehand. And I'm going to have to shrink the 
font down here so we can see what's going on. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a tab right there because I want to line up just like that. And one way to identify an appositional construction is simply to put an equal sign like that. So this is basically the construction. And in fact, now that the text is smaller, I'm going to go ahead and put this back here. It's a little bit easier. So you have this faith and love through the hope. What hope would that be? It's the hope that's been laid up for you in heaven. And what's that hope? Well, it's what you heard beforehand in the word of truth. And what is the word of truth? It is the gospel. Again, the whole advantage of phrasing is that it forces you to ask the question, what is connected to what? And that's what we need to be doing in second-year Greek.